Good morning, Year 7. Welcome to our next lesson in uh, in uh, Identity Poetry. Uh, before we get on to the actual poem, I want you to do this do now. Uh, just take five minutes on this. Uh, what is it? A miniature silver sword which has shrunk to fit in the palm of the hand is used to pierce the dark wound of a tiny full moon. When the weapon is twisted, a squeak of pain is heard. The sky, which can come in different colours, splits open and we can then step into another world. What is that? And if you can't work out what it is, and you know what, I couldn't when I saw that um, the first time. If you, if you can work it out, fantastic, I couldn't. Uh, can you see any language devices in there, any metaphors or similes? So just jot those down over the next five minutes and uh, I'll review that in a couple of slides time. Today's learning objective is to analyse a poem called A Martian Writes a Postcard Home. So your title that goes into your books is A Martian Writes a Postcard Home. What you're going to need for today is uh, a pen and your book, a copy of the poem, which I will attach to, uh, to class charts, and some uh, highlighters, oh, a, a, a highlighter and some coloured pens. Right, the do now. Um, it's a key in a lock. I know it's uh, a bit of a leap, but that's how you want to be thinking about this uh, This poem that we're looking at. There's a term that's actually not used in this lesson, but um, it's called defamiliarisation. You know, uh, what if something's familiar to you, defamiliarisation is when a writer takes something very, very ordinary and uh, makes it um, extraordinary. Um, and that's what the person's done with the key in the lock there. And it gives you an idea about this poem. It's to do with uh, a Martian and, and, and a Martian looking at things on Earth and seeing them through completely fresh eyes and seeing how they appear to uh, to them. Now, um, part of the object of uh, today's lesson is to, uh, to sort of engage with the creative side of our brains. People always say, oh, I'm not creative, but everybody is. Um, it's a question of, uh, of working at it. Creativity is like a muscle. If you use it, um, it'll, it'll get better. Um, and uh, creative writing is a large part of your English GCSE so it is something that we need to work on and it's actually quite easy to get good at things like creative writing it's from a personal perspective I, I find it easier than analysis and certainly more fun and it's worth half the value of the exam so uh, just bear that in mind I know your GCSEs are a long way off yet but they're always lurking in the background um, and, then we, and to be able to recognize and discuss a writer's use of powerful words and choices and images word choices and images. Now when you're looking at a poem, poems, uh, every single word, piece of punctuation, every line length, every stanza, which is like the verse that they're in, has been thought about deeply. Nothing at all is by accident in poetry. Nothing really at all is by accident in writing, but even more so in poetry. So never forget to look at the title of a poem. Um, and in this one, it it pretty much tell what well, you know it's, it's perfectly obvious there's no double meaning here a Martian sends a postcard home it's as if that had happened now read the poem add to your explanation what the poem is about the Martian has never th seen things on earth before it uses lots of different words to describe common everyday objects. Now I'm going to read the poem for us in a minute, so I know you've read it over once to get a feel for it. Um, so what you're looking at here is a series of puzzles. Can you identify the, ob the, the objects the Martian is describing? Now this poem was written a, over, you know, close to a hundred years ago, I think. Um, so some of the objects in it are going to be very difficult for you to recognise, because um, even objects that do the same job now as then are, are completely different. But have a go and see what you can come up with. Highlight the lines that tell you what each object is. Even if you don't know what it is, highlight the lines that tell you what each object is. And at the end of that, I want you to write or draw what the object is next to the line you've highlighted. There's an example on the next slide. Here's an example of a word that's gone out of, uh, gone out of use nowadays. It says, uh, this is in, from the poem, Caxtons are mechanical birds with many wings. Now, a cax, Caxton is a person in the, I think it's in the 15th century, who's credited with inventing the first printing press on which the first books were made, but nobody calls books Caxtons anymore. 
um, but you could identify from that line um, what what the words were that were trying to identify something so you would highlight that and uh, write what you think it is it is at the end now you're going to you're going to have difficulty with uh, some of these not all of them you can probably work out 70% of them because they've got uh, um, uh, modern uh, versions of um, so and here they all are okay so see if you can uh, see if you can put them in the right place uh, there's rain there look there's a toilet actually there is reference to going to the toilet in there a telephone that's an old old style telephone I don't know if you're aware of these year seven you used to put your finger in them and drag the dial round I mean these went out of uh, out of use in in the sort of uh, in about 1984 um, but you, you know, some people still have them in houses as kind of novelty phones and so on. Look, there's a watch there. There's the books there, which were described as ta uh, Caxtons, and there's some people asleep there. So see if you can look, hit, uh, link up these images with the lines that describe them in the poem. I'll just give you uh, 15 minutes to do that. Now I'm going to read the poem. Caxtons are mechanical birds with many wings, and some are treasured for their markings. They cause the eyes to melt or the body to shriek without pain. I have never seen one fly, but sometimes they perch on the hand. You see, now that we know their books, that's interesting. I, th I particularly like that line, sometimes they perch on the hand. You know, if you hold a book um, in, your, in your hand between your thumb and forefinger there, that's almost like a bird that's perched on your hand, isn't it? That's defamiliarisation. That's making an everyday um, image something new which is what a Martian would see of course if they came here mist is when the sky is tired of flight and rest its soft machine on ground then the world is dim and bookish like engravings under tissue paper so mist you'll know what that is you can see it in the picture there is when sky is tired of flight so the sky falls to earth and I love that and rest its soft machine on the ground soft machine that's fantastic isn't it i always thought that was a good way of describing human beings the soft machine uh, then the world is dim and bookish like engravings under tissue paper rain is when the earth is the earth is television it has the property of making colors darker you know when it rains all the greenery looks uh, looks darker than it did before it almost colors it in doesn't it Model T is a room with the lock inside. A key is turned to free the world. For for, for the free, well, I'll do that again. Model T is a room with the lock inside. The key is turned to free the world for movement. So quick there is a film to watch anything missed. Now, Model T is a very old car. You know, it really is a really old-fashioned car. So you wouldn't be expected to know that. Basically, it's a car. Is a room with the lock inside. A key is turned to free the world. So you put the key in the ignition, turn it on. And the world is yours you can drive anywhere but they go so fast that there is a film to watch for anything missed which is the mirror you look in the mirror and it plays back what you passed so after that great sense of freedom with the uh, car um, but time is tied to the wrist or kept in a box ticking with impatience Only the young are allowed, to suffer, are allowed to suffer openly. Adults go to a punishment room with water but nothing to eat. They lock the door and suffer the noises alone. No one is exempt and everyone's pain has a different smell. Well, I'll allow you to pick the bones out of that, but that's talking about going to the bathroom, isn't it? Only the young are allowed to suffer openly. As you can see in that picture, you know, little babies um, don't care about those um, sort of bodily functions. But the rest of us, we go into a room with water but nothing to eat. We make all sorts of horrible noises. Everyone has to do it and everyone has a different smell. That's revolting, isn't it? But true and a, and a unique way of looking at something very every day. At night, when all the colours die, they hide in pairs. What could that be? Night time, everyone goes, all couples go to bed together, don't they? And read about themselves in colour with their eyelids shut. So they dream, don't they? We dream at night. Oh dreams play out in colour behind our eyes. Short quiz for you here, year seven. What is an adjective? What is a verb? What is a metaphor? What is personification? What is a simile? Now I know 
you know, all the clever lot, new lot. Um, I know you know all those. Go on to the next slide. In case you didn't know what they all are, here is what they all are. The one that co constantly gets mixed up is the metaphor and the simile, and it's that old uh, way of um, making sure you know the differences. If you say a metaphor is saying something, is describing something by saying it is something else, a simile is describing something by saying it is like something else. So the moon is a silver coin is a metaphor. The moon is like a silver coin is a simile. If you need to write those down, if you don't know them, do, but I'm pretty certain that we all know those, don't we? Now I want you to go back through the poem and identify any of those things that you can find in the poem. Just highlight them and write metaphor, simile, personification, whatever it is next to it. If you, have, if you are struggling, there's uh, some help on the next slide. There we are, verbs causing the eyes to melt, shriek, personification, the sky is tired of, tired of flight. Then the world is dim and bookish like engravings under tissue paper, like, that makes it a simile. Rain is when the earth is television, that's a metaphor. It has the property of making colours darker, that's an adjective. OK, year seven, and here's your task uh, for today. And this is the thing that I want you to upload onto uh, class charts for me, please, so I can have a look at it. Um, you won't necessarily get feedback on these for a couple of days because uh, I don't get a chance to look more than about twice a week. Um, but when I do, I should be having a close look. So uh, do your best work. I know you will. So I want you to imagine you are a Martian. Write a postcard home describing one of the, these places or events. A football match, the cinema, the park, a restaurant, the theatre, ballet, a fair, a disco, which is just a sort of dancey nightclub, a church service or an idea of your own. Now, first thing you do is to make spend five minutes making a plan. So choose which one you're going to use. Mind map your ideas about the chosen idea. Plan your language, you know, uh, make, you know, you can even just make a tick list. Make sure you've got similes, metaphors, adjectives and verbs in there and use imagery. Um, and that'll take you 20 minutes to do that. And um, yeah, that's the thing that I want you to uh, upload onto class charts. So thank you very much, Year 7. Have a lovely weekend and I will speak to you next week.